We live in a time where the flow of information is constant, with competing voices in crowded spaces, where old school thoughts meet new school ideas. We are constantly having to recreate ourselves. To understand these identities, we need to decipher the culture. This is unconventional. This, this is, is Lounge Academics. academics. I, no, I, 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 I got the little red thing. It says a um, invitation expired. I was like, uh-oh. And then, uh, then I also I mistyped. And the way you read it, it says, like, I'm not here for any acceptance or any yes. friends. I was like, no, no, no. I, that was a typo, but we got there. We got there, my man. We got there. Good to see you, sir. It's really brilliant good. to see you, man. Welcome. I'm, I'm glad to have you on live, man. You Thank know, you. I feel like I know you already, you know. Um, you, yeah. From seeing all your activities, seeing everything that you're doing, it's brilliant to have you here. Um, Thank you. There's so much to what you do, and there's so much about what you're about in terms of your being, but I'm sure this is going to be fleshed out. As we talk a bit more, we're going to unpack some stuff mm -hmm. um, about your own personal journey, your professional journey, and some of the things that you're getting involved in. But without further ado, as part of the five minutes to disrupt format, normally what we do is we give our guests like the first five minutes for them to kind of let people know who they are, to come into the room, mm -hmm. let people know who they are, what they do. Um, because normally we, the emphasis is about you shaping the narrative, yeah? Mm -hmm. Shaping the narrative shaping it all and and taking the platform so over to you sir just to let people know who you are mad how do you define x amount That's of years right. i don't want to reveal how old i am in five in five minutes all right let's, let's try to justify <laughs> it um so i've been born in south africa raised by malawian parents i was born in a very tumultuous period which is for you your generation know something called apartheid uh, where it was just a lot of segregation. So what you're accustomed to civil rights is what we lived through my lifetime experience. But I've always had the beauty of comedy. And uh, being a yeah. uh, practiced Catholic, I then generally feel like God brought me into existence to bring a sense of happiness to people. Uh, maybe not a sense of comedy, maybe not a sense, but I always felt in a sense of entertainment. So I always embedded that. So by the time I did move to the UK when I was about 12 or 13 years old, I, I wanted to push that. But then I didn't yeah. know how I wanted to push it, but the form came through Stepping Stones and through a beautiful guardian angel of my aunt who told me, Junior, whatever you want to achieve, go and make it happen through the performance. So I pursued a career as acting. But I didn't start off as an actor. I started off as a stand-up comedian. Uh, but that okay. was never, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was never my end goal. I never wanted to be a stand-up comedian because the art of that is amazing any credit to any comedians they deserve credit but i knew that yeah. i was a funny person but i knew i didn't want to remain in stand-up so i just wanted it to be kind of like the gateway and that allowed me to kind of enhance into getting from comedy central then onto the short films onto the tv and cinemas and netflix today but then i always had this concept that i have a vivid memory of apartheid and um i always remembered where i came from that's uh, yeah. one of the things many of us, and like, don't get me wrong, there are times where I kind of for, I forget the ideology of my family and my blood, but that's in a momentary lapse. But in general, I always knew who I was, and I always felt like any time I'm progressing, it means nothing if my people are not progressing with me. Yeah, so yeah. I always had this concept. So yes, I was born in South Africa, but I'm more Malawian than anything else, because my first language is Chichewa. Um, I eat Malawian food. I go to Malawi every, every year, every two years. Um, so I always had this concept, and I always believed that I was one of them people who was fortunate to get a second opportunity, and I used that second opportunity by allowing myself to remember that I'm one of the few kids who had a second opportunity. So anytime I do go back home, I always try to push and encourage the children, because they may not have had the luck that I had, but then now I'm in a position to encourage them, which led me to open up my own children's charity for yeah. underprivileged kids. It's a non-profit organization. So it was always a thing where I, I, re, I didn't want to progress alone because success means nothing without your loved ones around. Okay, yeah. so be it, these kids are not my loved ones, but they're part of me, and I always progress with it. So anytime you did see me escalating with my career, there were individuals who were getting uplifted as well, which has allowed me to work with children literally all over the world. I've been fortunate to be in 44 countries in this current time wow. of my life. And it allows me to work with kids, ensure that I promote kids, encouraging them to the importance of education. Education in the Western world is kind of seen, education is kind of seen as a way of life, 
but in actuality, it's a privilege to be educated. And I try to enunciate that into kids' yeah. heads and say, yeah, we've got to focus on education. And like I said, with so much has gone on in the last, in this year, it just allowed me to kind of uplift into being, I didn't intend to be a front line of the whole Black Lives Matter, but it kind of happened. But it was something where I had a voice, I had a presence, I had the connects, my networking circles and saying, but to allow all these, and it doesn't mean nothing to have it by myself. We are all trying to build an empire. So I said, now's the time for us to build an empire, but we've got to lay down the foundation because we've been demolished for 500 plus 100 years. So demolishment has happened, but now we've got to lay down the foundation. But it doesn't happen without the success of your people and education of thyself. Wow. Yeah, so in the grand scheme, I don't know if that was five minutes or not, but I kind of broke the... the no, 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 I think, <laughs> but it's important. It sets the tone, mm. um, particularly from where, obviously, where you've come from and the trajectory to where you are now. And mm. I've got to say, I, if you if you permit me to, to kind of go back a bit, because yeah. you're talking about the experience of apartheid stuff. <laughs> apartheid, I mean, I can only start to imagine mm. what that must have been like. So I guess for me, um, for the purposes of everyone who I guess here, although we are from the African diaspora and we're here in the Western world, we've had mm. certain privileges, so to speak, in terms of our experience. Although mm. we have experienced, obviously, racism, but I would think there's a next level to that. When we're talking South apartheid, South Africa apartheid, I think that would be a different level. But let me hear from you what that experience was yeah, like. Okay, um, so... Yes, I was in the the buried the beast of it all, but I was there when the the rise was coming. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Because put it this way, to know how fresh it was, I think my year in primary school, I think was probably the second or third year in the history of South Africa to be in an integration school. That's yeah. how fresh the, this memory is. Yeah. So when you see it, because I know a lot of people from Australia and a lot of people of segregation in Brazil and a lot of segregation in Asia and Africa, it's all around the world. But then it was very blunt because we're at the time we're naive as kids. We're naive to it. I, it's just for example, when I went back to Cape, when I went to Cape Town, I was born in Joburg. Yeah. But when I went to Cape Town, you also got the island of where um, Nelson Mandela was imprisoned mm -hmm. in Robben Island. Yeah. I was the only one who was willing to really go there i wanted to go but all my family members who are older didn't want to because the memory is still a little bit fresh yeah. to them because so i was still yeah. i was still young and at the time so now looking back i'm thinking Ooh, okay now i understand why this teacher kind of hit me because obviously caning was a thing over something that was similar to what another white kid said or bull. so there's a few things there was elements but i will never give up my experience because my experience was when the end of the reign has happened. So if you yeah. give people a better understanding of... But, but still, you would have felt... Yeah, yeah. Like a... Yeah. But I guess yeah, still... I you would have... um, yeah, the ripples of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I felt the ripples. Like I said, um, there's so many times where the signs were no more there, but your presence was not welcome. You know, yeah. the, like uh, hearing... Um, I don't want to get too deep into it, but like situations that were verbally and sometimes physically happened to family members that I saw... I don't want to paint uh, this stream to be about that, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, hear I, that. I acknowledge I hear it. That. But like I said, when you're at that age, well, four, between three and six years old, you're kind of bliss to yeah. you understand something's going on, but you don't really understand. So, and yeah. some things you don't, yeah. Mm. So how, how in terms of, I, I, I kind of am picking up on the sense that comedy and acting, and this has been a creative outlet and a form, to some extent, of a bit of escapism, kind of from that, as well as your desire to kind of act and to pursue that that career. What was the journey from um, actually leaving from, obviously, from um, that experience to moving on to um, to pursuing your acting? What was that kind of journey like, and what's that been like for you? <laughs> it was not as straightforward as I thought it was. I thought, yeah. ah, I've done a bit of drama workshop. Okay, here we go, Oscars, let's go. <laughs> it was a few yeah. uh, stepping stones. I've been fortunate, I've done acting work in the U.S., um, I went to the U.S. twice. I was there for Broadway another time for a summer period. Uh, but there was many stepping stones to it. It wasn't necessarily yeah, yeah. a straightforward thing. I always loved the concept of making people laugh. Yeah, yeah, Literally yeah. Literally from yeah, the yeah. get-go, I loved to make people laugh. Because I have a full sense that I, I always knew at a young age everyone has a scenario or problem in their life. Everyone. But I thought that the beauty of comedy 
is for a moment you forget about all your worries and for a moment yeah, you yeah. acknowledge all your beautiful for a moment and bring your sense of happiness and I just love the the power in that essence of comedy so i always knew that i was going to pursue it in that concept i just never knew how um and then obviously when so what came, kind of steps what kind yeah. of steps did you take to pursue your comedy so literally from malawi you're you know you're a child you're growing up you've come mm-hmm. through school education at which point would you like okay i'm going to pursue this and what what kind of physical steps did you take um, okay. to to get to how did it start how did it start um, so the defining point um i'll speak about it now uh so it's kind of a, a long one but i'll try and shorten it for you so yeah. when i was coming up and i went to a perform a drama workshop that was run by bafta ward when adam deacon Yeah, uh, yeah yeah so I did a workshop with him which was great. Uh, so I did a few extra work but then I was kind of like yeah maybe I like doing this but I was just too sure. So then as I was training I wanted to have my own I- identity and I wanted to protect my family's name and and image. So I said I'm going to change my last name to a stage name. So um Okay. Yeah yeah so yeah. So under pseudonym so, Yeah okay. yeah yeah yeah. Um not many people many people think that Clarence is my last name but it's not but no one needs to know what it is but it did begin to see So I was always changing. I used to be called Frank. I wanted to change my name to Frankie because when you say yeah. the name Frankie, your your face tends to lift Frankie and that's what yeah. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to uplift people. The side the side to all of this. It's not accident. Yeah. Yeah. Um so then I wanted cuz Frankie was two syllables. I wanted my stage name to be same letter beginning with C but two syllables as well. So I had an aunt. She was actually the first one to believe in me. She told me, "Junior, whatever you want to achieve, go out and make it happen." I'm this time I'm a teenager, you know, I'm I'm too cool to listen to my elders. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, whatever, I'm embarrassed in front of the family. And fortunately, that was the last time I'll see her. Uh she unfortunately passed away a few a few days or a week after that, and then I was oh, just wow. like, and that was like the first person I knew that had passed away. So that was the real first one. I was like, yeah. whoa, death is real. Cuz when you you when you when you're a kid, you're blitz. like, oh, okay, you you know what death is, but you don't really know it until it physically happens to you. So then I was like, "Raw, um okay, I need to actually start listening to my elders. I need to actually start pursuing being serious." And she told me she only had one kid, and she said if she ever had another kid, she'll name the kid uh Clarence. And funny enough, it just fit okay. two syllables, Frankie Clarence, began to let us see and it had meaning. So I kind of carry her journey through her name. Okay. So, that was, so, that so that's kind of paying homage to her really. Yeah. Um no, no, respect for that, man. And I guess we know the best of times acting's not easy, right? Because no. many people like you said you pay the homage and respect to comedians and people that do stand up mm. and doing that. But I think the same amount of reverence and respect needs to go for those pursuing any career in the yeah. performing arts, particularly acting and stuff. Mm. What's been the kind of journey what has been some of the challenges for you um in kind of a, in in navigating the acting world and getting spots and gigs and stuff um i feel for myself personally it's been so you haven't seen me me and those who haven't seen me personally i am of the height of 5 foot 1 all right and instantly when you're that height everyone kind of dubs you as incapable of achieving so i well, always yeah, had yeah. Oh, I'm a short hurdles. man too, bro. I'm a couple yeah. inches taller than you still. It, it's what it is. Now, the thing is, I, I was actually funny tweeting about this earlier today. I don't yeah. see myself as a short person. It's, it's crazy because I'm shorter than the average. But yeah. because I always had this self-confidence and self-presence and I was aware of who I was. And most importantly, I always loved who I was as a person. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you yeah. to the person who said uh, respect to my aunt. Thank you for that. So, um, yeah, yes, yeah. I always had the hurdle is that oh Frankie okay okay well, okay but then does he fit the image oh he sure I don't know it's like capability and ability doesn't come from the heightness I'm not just saying playing no. basketball even people who play basketball I know there was that basketball player who was I think 5-2 or 5-3 and he was in yeah. the movie Space Jam so there's the burden of fan of I mean the white man's world it's bad enough that I'm a black person but it's even harder now Doubly, yeah. because of my physical appearance because my physical appearance doesn't tell me that I'm capable of doing a Shakespearean speech or doesn't give me a, it doesn't come that way and it's just the hardship of having to constantly prove myself even to the point socially sometimes not too much socially because like I said I'm 
I'm the center of attention in the right way when I am in the room because everyone knows, as Frankie said, I've got this beautiful presence about me. I may sure. not be blessed with a Denzel or Trey Song's look, but I've definitely got the presence and the humor and the energy and the charismatic. So even though I was short in height, I constantly had to push myself. I know, I know many, many gigs. Like I could have been on so many things, but they didn't take me on simply because of my height, which doesn't make any sense because if the ability was there, isn't that what you're looking for? Maybe if you want the look, whatever that is, but then I, I don't see how you can define someone just based on their physical appearance on that aspect, which they have no control over. Totally. And how, I mean, how do you, there's a couple of things with this, because like I said, as you're speaking, yeah, mm -hmm. you are, this is mirrored because we've had a similar journey in terms of that hype thing, very much like yourself often had to deal with the, the navigating people's projections, right, yeah. that they put onto you, yeah? You're too yeah. confident, you're too bright, you're smiling too hard, you're too funny, you're too... Yeah. You can't be doing this, yeah? So um, there's these expectations. But I just wondered, um, not many people really understand that struggle, yeah? Mm -hmm. And this is something that I can speak to personally okay. from my own experience, yeah? But I wondered, for you, how do you... Because it takes resilience to go into the acting world. There are certain depictions that are there mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what people are seeing, as you said, based on the Western world and what it means to be acting and what actors look like or how they should look, right? Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to ask, what in them moments of when you're dealing with that, that, that kind of blatant rejection, really, mm -hmm. um, based on physical appearance, how do you navigate that? It's for its own. Um, I've kind of learned to... Because I've been studying quite a bit during this lockdown. Okay. I've kind of had this concept, and I was watching this beautiful documentary with Tariq Woods. Um, he was saying that um, no one's ever going to go 100% with success. It's virtually impossible. But the difference between a winner and a loser is when a winner loses, it's a lesson. But a loser lose, they thought that they've lost the game. So it's yeah. not about the concept. So sometimes, but it's always keeping, especially in that trajectory and navigation, Sometimes when they say no, when they're auditioning you, it doesn't mean to full stop. Because there's been times where I got a no for a production, and literally three years later, they email me, say, hey, remember you auditioned this, we got something for okay. you. Coincidentally, it was actually better than the thing that I originally went for. So it's always about leaving, I'm not saying for everyone to always be your best friend, but at least don't allow the bridge to be burned, or just keep things mutually respectful. And that's not just with acting, that's with anything. Because yeah, one yeah. day or another, we may need someone who has got the ability to help you get through that bridge. But if you burn that bridge, and if you allow a je rejection to really consume me, then it's, you're just kind of killing yourself than anything else. Because sometimes rejection is actually a blessing in disguise. It's not a mistake that God put me in this position. It's no, yeah. no mistake that God put you in this position or anyone watching. Yeah, God didn't yeah. put no mistake in anything that the Spirit did, but it's allowing us to go through that, that level next. He's given us the tools. It's not us to believe in his work to go to the next level. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you. Real talk. And I guess yeah. from that experience that you're having, yeah, um, mm. like you said, that, that takes a paradigm shift, though, I take mm. it. Because like you said, you've, you alluded to doing a lot of work. Mm. And I guess working on yourself, kind of thinking about, you know, who you are. And like I said, there's a strong sense of who you are. But mm -hmm. I think normally where you're at, I, I don't think many people reach that point of the journey because they're so defeated by what they see. Like I saw, just to bring you to, to task on this, I saw an Instagram post that you did some time back where you were talking about you were basically cross-examining and examining the um, the influencer, this concept of the influencer, and yeah. what is happening on the <laughs> ground. You're lo you see, you're smiling, and yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about, because there is this thing around this full sense of reality, this, this unattainable beauty, this thing of projecting this certain lifestyle, a certain mm -hmm. look. And we know how much um, people's... Um, well-being is affected by social media, particularly Instagram. Whenever I scroll through, all I'm seeing is cleavage and women with hair and whatever and this and makeup. <laughs> yeah. that, that's all I ever see. Or if it ain't that, it's a brother that's got his chest carved out of stone. Do you mm. know what I mean? Or, or whatever. So I guess what I'm alluding to is it's great that you're doing that, but I think there's a lot of people that are struggling with that journey, you know, as part of that process. 
Yeah, because you know? they don't have um, an, an ideology or idea of who they are. And yeah. when you don't know who you are, you kind of tell another person just so they can tell you, so you can kind of hear it from someone else. And we kind of get approval of others. When actually, yeah. Adam, we only need approval of ourselves. Everyone's yeah. kind of looking for attention or just to be appreciated. And there's many yeah. concepts of it because it's, 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 it's like um, the evil genius of what these productions and these entities are doing because they know that there is a specific trigger in dopamine that we get when we get a sense of response, so i.e. likes or, yeah. or, 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 or comments or yeah, whatever. Science, yes, science, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you get that, you kind of like that dopamine that it brings you, that you seek for it even more. So you feel like this is going to give you a sense of happiness, but in actuality, when you do something that's against your morals, because I know so many of us individuals, and myself in the past as well, we do yeah. things that are against our morals and our values to feel that will make us happier, but in actuality, it doesn't. And what it does to us is the records show. That's why... The statistics now show there's uh, overdose, high numbers and overdose of drugs, uh, high number of suicides, uh, suicide, high yeah. number of mental health. These yeah. are all personally struck there. And what it actually does, it's not really benefiting anybody. And be, when you get that, you get a lot of people who say, I'm sad, I'm ill. But they don't say that. Because how many yeah. times do you ask someone, hi, how are you doing? I'm fine. Literally all the time yeah, they say, I'm fine. Yeah. You ask someone, I've been fortunate, unfortunately, I've not been to a funeral as of yet. Um, but you go to a funeral, you ask to the widow or whoever, say, how are you doing? Say, oh, Dory, I'm right. It's, it's an emotion to be angry. It's an emotion to be sad. But we yeah. become so subhuman that having emotions now weird thing. And that's kind of the concept of what social media kind of brings to you. Yeah, I know individuals definitely. who get 2,000 likes and say, oh, I've got 2,000 likes. Yeah, but then how are you really feeling? And it says that uh, I'm feeling kind of lonely. Most of the people who have the highest numbers on here, are not necessarily happy people, but then we all see for it, especially in black com cultures as well. Black cultures are kind of engineered that if you don't have, you're less than. So we've been engineered so much that environment allows us to, if we have material in belongings, that means we're a success or we're good, but it actually material yeah. is not is really an emphasis be definitely, yeah, on what you have as opposed to your character or qualities that you possess. Definitely. If yeah. you just look at the yeah. pre uh, previous, yeah. um, in the previous century, uh, Harriet Tubman, she wasn't a rich person. Malcolm X, mm. no one knows what he drove. Um, not even black people. You look at Gandhi, uh, Mother Teresa, uh, Malcolm, mm. um, Dr. King. So I can give you a whole heap of names of people that fought and sacrificed their lives just for us to talk food and share, and they were not rich people. So it goes yeah, to show that how can we idolize someone saying, oh, Malcolm X, but then here I am drinking, here I'm spanking women's bums and all that. If you want to <laughs> represent and live a person's life, <laughs> you need to live the life that they were wishing, not use their name in vain. Yeah, similar like you totally. can't use the Lord's name in vain. Similar like these people don't use their name in yeah. vain and expect to be treated respect when you can't even respect yeah. the name you're wishing. Definitely. So how's, what has been the, um, the real success stories? What have been the real achievements for you so far today that you're really proud of in terms of your pursuit of the acting um, Act, well, in your role as a professional actor hmm? as an acting wise okay acting yeah, yeah. I feel one thing I've got to give a massive shout out to uh, Cole Johnny uh, Cole the comedian okay. he's done a real job so I'll probably say my most recognised work was the Weekend movie which uh, ended up which is still on Amazon and Netflix and sure yeah I thought I give recognised it because he made a comedy film mm -hmm. and which is great for sex but I'm not funny in that whatsoever. That was what shocked a lot of people. When I told a lot of people on the comedy floor, that, oh, I bet you're hilarious. I'm not. I don't want to ruin the, uh, the, the narrative yeah, for sure. people. But basically, the film is basically three guys um, come across a bag of money and uh, they spend the money being teenagers, but they find out the money belongs to a mafia person. And <laughs> okay. later we find out the mafia the is money. myself. And I'm not hilarious in that whatsoever. I'm straight there. These guys have taken my money and have used it. And I just, I want to acknowledge to Coach o, um for acknowledging and seeing that I'm more than just a funny man. I am an actor who's trained sure. to be an actor who so happens to be funny. So I thought that was my greatest achievement right. because I was able to portray a movie as the main antagonist, the main villain. It would have been different if I was the side man or the side villain, but the actual yeah. main villain 
and to pray trade and seen worldwide i i thought that was a massive so, so your acting skill was really recognized there yeah as a yeah, yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. prior to that i did um as someone just mentioned i did the tv show called the mckenzie yeah mckenzie yeah. the family sitcom that that's obviously what i did i've done uh things with comedy central i've done so yeah. many comedy things so naturally you get pigeonholed into thinking this guy's just bam just one specific color but then later on i show people now I am able to do a US accent. No, I am able to play a young prince. No, I am able to play a villain. So these are just many things. How, I, always... I mean, mm -hmm. sorry, Frank, to, to no, interrupt no. there, but I'm really interested to learn more about that because that is a concern that I've often heard other people highlight about being typecasted effectively. Mm -hmm. Once you do one particular role, you kind of just live throughout that kind of role or you play mm -hmm. that similar role in different films. How, how, do you, how are you able to... Has that been um, a challenge for you, or how have you navigated that yet again? Um, have you, as people try to typecast you into certain roles, given that you're that comedy, and, and how have you negotiated and worked through that? Um, so yes, I'll be, I've, okay, so in my, in my perspective, I may be wrong, my age may be wrong, or tell me otherwise, but I thought I haven't mm -hmm. been typecasted as yet. Maybe I am wrong. Um, but I feel, Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Frankie. Okay, it's back yeah, you, it's yeah, back you, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you started there for a second. Yeah, same, okay. same view. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now cool. I'm here. Okay. So yeah, I've been cool. typecasted, but bear in mind, you need to remember. So the weekend was just one of the few films that I have done that were on Netflix, but just the one that I appreciate and the one that be most recognised. You, you, I think it was the year after, so 2018 or 17. I was a little bit quiet in the scene. Solely because yeah. I was getting asked to do things that were not going back, not in my nature. And um, basically, it would not, in terms of longevity, it would not have done my career any good. Um, so, what, what, so, sorry, friend, what kind of things? What, what so were they doing that was going against you? So basically, they want to be doing some humiliating things that would have been uh, shameful to the black culture. Just, it's very Uncle Tom kind okay. of thing. Or another thing that um, I play uh, a stupid, geeky kid that was a nerd. Nothing wrong with that role, but you don't go from being a main villain in a movie to the next scene you're doing as um, basically the laughing stock. It doesn't show sure. progression. So yeah, of course. I could have yeah. taken it, and the fun, the funds that it gave it to me, it, it was it was good, but it wasn't enough for for people to think that I'm a bit of a plem or to think that. And then people would just say, "Okay, bam, that was just a one-off. He's just only this." So it's about sometimes you got to say no, and I understand many actors they're so desperate for work they say yes to anything. And before you know it, they're like, oh, I can't get work. It's because you shot yourself in the foot doing foolishness for a short-term gain. But if you actually paint the picture and look at longevity, you know that actually you can have progression as an actor if you study the game, if you study yourself, and you study where you want to go, know your end goal. Sure. Know your end goal. I know people say, I want to, my end goal is to be in sci-fi movies, but I'm going to act a plem and do something that's completely the opposite way. So you, you need to realize where you are as an actor, and then when you do, you can make the road a bit smoother. But... Yeah, I've had turbulence, but I've not allowed myself to be typecasted as yet. Yes, there's okay. certain people that would like me to see certain roles, but sometimes I'm saying no to them because, not because of oh, them or the finance, whatever, it's just simply because it's not the direction I want to go. Which, okay. if they really understand, they'll respect you for that, and they will not burn the bridge. Like I said earlier, you don't burn the bridge. They respect yeah. you for being honest and you respect it. So never burn no bridges, what I always say, but yeah. I mean, I would imagine, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would imagine in the UK, th this is just my assumptions here based on conversations I've had with other people as well, yeah? I would imagine that we, being a black person, being in the UK, there are not many prevalent mainstream programmes with black folk in them, right? Mm -hmm. So I would assume that we are somewhat limited in the roles that we can kind of take on. Um, or that there's few options. That's an assumption I'm making based okay. on hearing from everyone else. And in your so opinion, I why want... do you think that is? What, pardon? In your opinion, why do you think that is? Well, I think that's largely to do with, obviously, the systemic racism that we mm -hmm. face in society. Mm. Um, I think that's it at the, at, at the core of it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So that means, to me, the only things that then become available are those... Um, 
stereoty- stereotypical yeah. and limiting roles. Mm-hmm. So I guess then when you consider someone like you that values yourself, there's certain things that you won't take. I would imagine those options get even smaller. Mm. Do you get what I mean? So I just wondered, um, how does that, anybody that's listening or watching in as you're out there doing your thing, because I know you've been on Netflix, I know you've done your thing with the National Theatre, I know there's been levels of success, but people that are particularly black people that are looking to enter this arena to come and do their acting thing and become a professional actor, what tips would you be saying to them? What would you be giving them um, given your interests and given your passions for your personal values as well in not selling yourself short, what would you be saying? So we're in a beautiful, beautiful period where Mm. we can create our own content. Um, I could only imagine decades before I came, ordering a camera must have cost you thousands. Now you just need to go Argos. You can get a really good camera, just get it for, you don't have to pay straight away. You You can pay it in installments now. But this is the thing, like when you say the opportunities are not there, it's because it is structurally designed. A prime beautiful example mm-hmm. is I did a pilot for a show. Uh, it was a black family show, not in McKenzie, okay, or something okay. else. Um, it was going to be on national television, but they didn't do no marketing. They did no promoting. That was first the first down call. But then they said that, okay, so it kind of gives a solution. This is how the illusion it gave you. They open the door for you. They open the doors for you. Sure, they sure. say, okay, here's the furniture. It hasn't been moved in 40, 50 years. We want you to make changes, but we don't want you to move the furniture. It kind of structures you to inevitably fail. And I remember being on sale, seeing some of these execs here trying to make last-minute decisions, which just didn't make any more sense. I'm like, in my head, I didn't say it out loud, but I think this is inevitably going to not be a success. And we were going at the time where they screened us. Bear in mind, they did no advertisement. They screened us. It was at the same time as EastEnders and the Champions League football. We're going on heavyweights here. And um, no one knows about the show already. And then when it did fail, they're like, oh, you see, this is why we don't give yeah, you that a chance. Yeah. And it's so they set you up for their own yeah. Yeah, self-conscious. So in answer to your question, how can you progress from that? It's simply creating your own platform. Like I said, no one is expecting your first kind of work to be amazing. That's sure, the beauty sure. of journey. I thought, because I'm a millennial and I can handily respect that my generation are very entitled. They have this illusion that once I finish school, <laughs> look, you're laughing because you're just like, I know. What you're... <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, they have this entitlement that once I finish school, I should be in your 100K straight a year. They don't want to appreciate or want to do the journey. And actually, sometimes the journey defines you more than the actual title you, that you get at the end. Yeah. And yeah. I feel yeah, there's going to be a lot of, my advice to them, there's going to be a lot of uh, rejections. But a beautiful African proverb that says that in order to have a rainbow, you need to have rain first. Yeah. You've got to weather that rain. And when you weather that rain, you get accustomed on how to condition yourself to this weather. And then when you know how to condition yourself, as in you know how to position yourself in your acting career, you understand, okay, this is when I can time it for when the weather does come to an end. So you time your production to uh, pilot season or you time your production to sure. when casting directors are looking. You time it so when you do get that rainbow, your rainbow has come because yeah. you've allowed the foundation and the platform to come and that journey to succeed. Because, yeah. like I said before, the journey defines you, not where you end up in the goal. So, so, you don't so wake there's up really that. something here really about resilience, remaining committed, sticking to the journey, oh, yeah, sticking yeah, to yeah. the path, and dealing with the rain, weathering the storm as you go along, but not losing sight of that goal is what I'm hearing quite strongly. I know I'm paraphrasing here, but yeah, that's yeah, what but I'm it's true. Like from. consistency is key. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, there are stories of overnight success. And to be honest, let's say um, I do bridge that gap, if I, that's my aim, to bridge that gap for Hollywood. When I do get Hollywood, they'll probably see, oh, this Frankie is an overnight success, but I've been doing this for the last yeah, 10 years you've been now. doing this, yeah, for a real minute. talk. And there's been yeah. other individuals who are now there. Now, prime example, if you look, if I said to name, no, I'm, gonna ask you, I'm not going to ask you to name, but if you'd ask the name of the five best actors in the world, probably five of them are all over the age of 40, or maybe even reaching 50 now. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Exactly, yeah. because the journey... Is a really long journey. It's similar like if you're doing a nine to five. If you want to be a CEO, you're not going to be a CEO at 23 years old. You're not going to be a CEO at 28. You're going to probably be there when you are the 40 or 50 year old. And the same with acting. Your progression 
is not going to come overnight, but you need to be with anything really. If you just keep practicing and keep consistency, yeah. you will you will get there. It may not be yeah. as quick as you want. Believe me, I thought it would be much quicker when I started. But then here we yeah. are, still going, still striving, and we just got to keep pushing because right. we all have beautiful dreams. But dreams don't happen when you're sleeping. Dreams happen when you work on them. And you Real talk, action, man. That's so tell me, up. how did you how did you jump on? I saw you had a little exchange with Idris, with Mr. Idris <laughs> Elba. Mr. How did that Elba, come yeah. about then? Yeah, you know, how did that? Tell me about man, that. Man. That was a very very interesting period because so yeah. this was. Um, Time flies. I think over a month or two months ago. So, Interest Elba was doing like basically giving advice to actors, right? And okay. just basically giving tips and everything. And just like, kind of giving people the gist of how to perform as an actor. So, he invited me on. I by my I was not even ready. So basically, I had the hair cap on. I was just laying in my bed, <laughs> dry mouth there, man. I was I was looking yeah. slip. And then you know when just like loading says you're about to go on. I was like, hey, with my bloodshot eyes. I was like, yeah. Really? I was like. Good evening. <laughs> Trying to say yeah. wusa with it. So, <laughs> yeah, we started discussing, and as I said you know, before, the beginning of the show, I, I've been blessed with this charming charisma approach that I love to use to lift people up. And he sure. saw that many of the people that come to him, they, they go to him looking for him to comfort them. But I knew that I came to him, and he was comforted by my presence. It was the other way around. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to comfort him, make him relax. He said he likes what he's about. I can see in my eyes that I'm something about me. He said, oh, um, do a monologue for me. I was like, yeah. And then I looked at the corner. I saw 5,000 people watching. So what, this was on the gra- this was on the live? He's asking you to do it a monologue. It was on the live, literally okay. like how we are now with Indus Elba, okay. 5,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll okay, get, literally, whilst this was going on, my phone is binging because I, I didn't prepare myself for everything was silent. <laughs> my phone was going, I had a friend from Tunisia saying, hey, Funky, I was in the middle of Tunisia and I told you where we were injured. I was like, hey. He said, do a monologue. I was like, man. So I did my thing. What I like to do with people who I want to remember me, I don't give them the, and with anything. Like Malcolm X was quoted, um, I paraphrase a little bit, but the best way to educate people is not give them complete answers, but it's to give them the seed. Yeah. So when they do remember and when they do find the answers themselves, it remembers sure. for them long lasting. Because if I can give you information, I say, oh, um, this, like 2 plus 2 equals 4 you, you're like whatever but I say yeah. let me know what 2 plus 2 is and then when you go home you think about it it starts subconsciously you remains in your out. head yeah. yeah yeah so when you do realise it it always remains in your head so I kind yeah. of always had that embedded in me so when I did the scene I never gave him a complete scene I just gave him a dose that he wanted more um, I still got the full video on my gallery somewhere the one on Instagram is only like the last bit but I gave him sure. he was like oh Frankie I want to see more and everyone's saying oh they want to see more I was like, oh, you're falling into my trick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, like, stop, man. Just give me a little bit of seasoning. Just That's right. Give them a little bit. That's and then they what? Like, yeah, exactly. So I did my thing, and he loved it. Um, he said, oh, I see it, but I, I wanted more. And they said, then we remained in contact by Twitter, so I'm still in contact with sure. him. But just what, from what came from that, just the recognition, I got, then Tandy Newton started following me. I don't even know how she ended up finding me. Tandy Newton yeah. followed me, and then obviously John Baeg came along. And then all these other people started coming. I was like, "Wow, the social media, this internet thing's quick." But I was the interest. Oh, but he kind of already knew of who Frankie is, few mutual friends. But yeah. what was the key is when I came to his face to face, I didn't go, "Oh my gosh, interest." I said, "Interest." I came to him like I'm here and I'm ready about I'm about this life. So I came with him in a different angle that he would not be accustomed to, but with leaving him my lasting impression of me. So yeah. No, of course, definitely. And obviously you said that kind of went into that kind of merge past with John Boyega. Is that how you then, because I've seen a lot of your images um, yeah. that was up there with, with obviously John Boyega as part of the Black Lives Matters movement. So how's that, was that something that naturally kind of um, organically grew as a result of um, that Idris interview? So the interesting, so Yaz just said yeah. uh, it was a great moment, a blur. Um, it was like literally the next two days for Indra Cell, but it was a blur. I did not know what year did I was in. Did you get in. starstruck? I, was, I, 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 I didn't get starstruck, but I was just like, rah, I really, I really held my ground in front of 5,000 people and in yeah. front of one of the best actors in the world. So, yeah, I was a little bit, it was a bit of a blur, and I got so many messages of saying they did them, I did them proud. But with John Baega, I had no idea, but he already knew who I was. I didn't even know that. 
And so I was helping with the Black Lives Matter. I was helping with the protests of it at the start of it. And so put it this way. We were only expecting on the first one probably about 2,000 people, but it ended up being 20,000 people. Like, I remember I was standing in one place. I just saw thousands, hundreds, hundreds. It's just, it just never ending. And it just got madder and madder. And then so people were getting a little bit impatient because first of all, people were a little bit aggressive or people were angry about the yeah. situation. And I knew the few celebs were going to be there, but I never knew who was. Uh, later on, I found out that uh, so many, Madonna was there, One Direction, uh, Sam Smith, and all that. Sure. But then it just got commotion. But then as I went back to the front, I saw a lot of, there was like a buzz going on. It wasn't like a buzz or like something a bad is happening, just like a, a positive energy. Yeah, yeah. And then I went yeah. to the front. I, just, I was just thinking, as when you're preparing or organizing things, you're always thinking of the worst case scenario. So I was there with my business. Yeah, like, you thought it was negative. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I went there. And then I bumped into his sister. And he was like, oh. So she pointed, like, she kind of knew who I was, but I didn't have time to comprehend who it was. I didn't sure. even know it was his sister. Yeah. And then I bumped in, it was John. And he said, oh, Frankie. I was like. He was like, yeah, man. He was like, yeah, it's Frankie. He says, oh, what's going yeah. on? He was like, Well, you want a signature, said, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, John Bowen. I'm like, John Bowen. <laughs> so. I felt like when he was there, I felt like he wasn't there just for the number. I thought he wanted to kind of leave him like a lasting memory or just basically speak. But he was hesitant to it. Then I basically said, I was like, bro, do it. Literally, the world is watching and do it. So now this is the thing. He spoke, but I didn't. So basically, how it was. So he had a microphone, but could have yeah. so many people didn't read project that. So I, yeah. no, speaker, sorry, a speaker. So I had a mic. Yeah. yeah. So I put it up. I thought Homeboy was going to only speak for like two minutes. He went on for a good, nothing wrong with it, but like eight, nine minutes. Now, Seriously, your arm must have been dead, bro. Bruh, bruh. <laughs> bruh. Now, if, you, if you look at the pictures. It's a like, powerful it image, though. Exactly. It's, it's a, a very... powerful image. It's a very yeah, powerful yeah. image. So many in the, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that people have done artwork over it and people yeah, have yeah. done canvases. I was like, wow. But then in my face, I was feeling what I was saying. But in my head, I was like, ah, my arm's getting tired. But obviously, I can't put it down because this is the whole world's watching it. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, like Statue of Liberty, just holding it up. But then he kind of spoke, and it was such a potent, beautiful speech because it wasn't aggressive. It wasn't um, sympathetic. It just merged so well, and it just boils down in tears, and then everyone was feeling the power. It kind of uplifted everyone because people were getting impatient because, bear in mind, we weren't expecting so many people, so naturally, we became disorganized. It just kind of worked yeah. beautifully, and it just. Well, is that when? Is that the sorry, Frank? Is that the same speech when he said, um, when he talked about he didn't know that he was going to have a job yeah, after this? Yeah, it was, a, it was the yes, same speech. It was the same speech. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. the same speech. Um, so the thing is, I yeah. did not think that will go worldwide. Like honestly, like really, really worldwide. Now I'm talking. Yeah, man, no, I'm not viral. talking viral for social media. I'm talking literally news programs. Well, yeah. Um, Artwork. Uh, there's been some that, even man. things are funny. Like one of the uh, one of the artists, I really love it. Um, the, with me holding the mic, they did a cartoon version of him in Star Wars, but he changed me into Chewbacca. <laughs> I was Chewbacca and that. I found that hilarious. People say, yeah. "Oh, you should sue them." I was like, "Man, if this is powerful." No. Then I'm thinking, "Hmm, actually." Maybe Disney going to give me a little bit of money for this. Or that. <laughs> I was like, maybe I'm, Yo, let, me, let me make a few phone it's calls. Sequels, let me, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I was, it was the same one. Um, but, yeah, that was just fortunate that I bumped into him. But I didn't re had no realization that he knew where I was. And, yeah, since then, we exchanged contacts and we're still in contact now. So, yeah. That's um, brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, yeah. excellent, so, man. And yeah. that all came off of the back, like you said, from the Idris kind of live stream. Even though yeah, he so, knew of you anyway. Even though he knew yeah, of yeah. you. So but, I was, yeah, yeah. So, I don't think, I don't think John knew me from um, the Idris thing. Um, but he knew me because such as, cause we're the same age group, right? Yeah. And we started at the same time. Our mutual circle, we've got mutual friends. Mutual but our mutual circles circle is, stuff. yeah, our yeah, circle yeah, is yeah. quite small. So we know of yeah. each other. But now we know each other. Uh, but sure. uh, so I ended up doing stuff with CNN and I ended up doing things with MPs and everything the last few weeks. Sure. And I plan to do more work with MPs, with people who I would like to network with. Um, Definitely. But that came through the interesting. So it was a domino yeah. effect. So that's the thing. That's yeah, what kind of going back to, like I said earlier. You kind of always need to have these plot and stones. Don't expect to swim when you don't even know how to 
yeah. to dive in the pool yet. Kind of lay these bricks off and then they'll come through, yeah. But but it sounds a lot of like, a lot of this is organic as well. And it's the seeds Ooh. that you sow with people. And to yeah. some extent, like I was talking to um, Yaz the other day about this actually, who's commenting here. We often talk about, you know, whether good or bad, whatever seeds you come, they're going to grow, you know, yeah. and they'll mm -hmm. come and meet you at some point along the journey, right? And that's for good or bad. You sell something negative, you know, you sow something bad, you reap what you sow, as they say. But at the mm. same time, I think if you sow certain seeds, it'd be very helpful and can prove um, beneficial to you in the mm. future, you know. And, and I think there's something really good yeah. about that. Yeah. You know, what's happening? Um, you're getting rid of me. Like, you try, Frank, yeah, you try yeah. to dash me already. You push us to start earlier. Yeah, now you're trying to too much, off. man. Me when I go, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> But I hear um, what you're saying, man. It's, it's, so, it's really, it's powerful stuff, man. And yeah, I guess... So what, yeah, go on. I was just going to ask you, what's, what's the future? What, like, so we've kind of spoken about, you know, um, the trajectory, the journey, who you've kind of met along the way, the bumps, mm -hmm. the challenges, the kind of highs, the rewards, the achievements. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's for Frankie right now? What, if you're speaking into your future and proclaiming and, and claiming what's to come, what is to come for the future for you, sir? Okay. Um... So I'll answer the question, but building up to your first part of your first your question, um, yeah, it has been organic, and some of the viewers who are watching this may say I've got a little bit lucky. That is true, but not that's probably 10% luck. Everything has been put into fruition for me to yeah. be in this position. Um, there's so Lost many individuals him, who need that luck, literally need that luck. With, same with Will Smith. He was lucky enough to bump into um, Quincy, um, yeah. and then that led to Fresh Prince. There's so many individuals, they agree, but you cannot create your luck. You, okay, you can now with the internet, but you can't necessarily create luck if you're just stuck at your home. You know, you need to put that shift in. Yeah, and yeah. what that led is pushing the shift in. So I was due to create my own um, series and short films, but that was prior to lockdown. So the yeah, long go, yeah. so what the aspirations were simply, I'm just trying to create content now that shows myself in a more diverse light. Sure. Um, mm. So I don't want to give too much information because I am speaking with the right people. Uh, but sure. there are mm. stuff like there's now projects that want me to portray myself as a single parent dad. Uh, okay, that, cool. Yeah, that's something we don't hear. We always hear single parent Acting moms. Skills. Yeah. But then but not dads, they are yeah. generally a lot it's of a single I'm parent dads. About yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't remember, remember many dads. Okay, I don't want to compare, but many dads are a little bit more lost as a single parent than a single parent mum, because they don't yeah. have that credit to women. Women are the key to all of our success, and I always respect women, but they mm -hmm. have this nonsense, not, not nonsense, they have this essence. <laughs> they have this essence Frigid of... slip there. Yeah, 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 yeah. the typo there, verbally. They have this essence of capability of achieving anything. So like I said, I'm a Catholic, and I genuinely believe God put his best traits in a woman. Was a woman leaving anything thrown at her. Yeah. And that's why a woman is always said. And vice versa with men, we kind of have the struggle, but our ego doesn't allow us to admit. So something like that, sure. um, to talk about single parent dads. Where that's powerful, naturally, man. Yeah, it's very powerful because yeah. to some degrees men, don't, degrees, men don't tend to... And I'm really quoting this. Some men don't have voices in that department. No. Yeah, men, have, men have many voices, but in that department, they kind of sometimes fall alone in that. And this is based on true stories, what this is going to be sure. about, to hear about... Very much so. Yeah, yeah. Speaking as about, one myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm but, hearing, yeah. I've, I've come across so many stats that are really sad for men, because, like, I think it was a stat, I think it was 85% of court cases always leads to the woman yeah, having the child yeah. in full custody. Even wow. though yeah. the, the woman is shown to have alcohol abuse, um, a disability, or sure. Um, sure. drug overdose, always yeah. favours, well, not always, most of favours the, and they generally are great men who want to be yeah. there for the kids, but then because sure. of the resentment of the wife, or the former wife, they don't get a chance, and then the, yeah. girl, the, the kid goes up it's with tough, the father. Man. Yeah, yeah, Fra so... Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm aware, Frankie, also, I think he has posed the question to you, and yep. I'm aware that we've got a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a question that Yaz had posed. So I've got you, Yaz. I'm going to put this to Frankie because he was talking. I don't think we saw it, but I caught it. Frank, he, she wants to know, Yaz wants to know, has there been, what's been the most embarrassing moment for you 
in terms of your acting journey? Has there been anything that's been totally embarrassing? And what has it been as far as the acting journey? Oh, <laughs> well, here we go. Um, no, okay. I'm going to say, uh, uh, naturally, yes, Ben, follow me. I'll follow you back. Uh, I don't know if I follow you already. I'll tell you otherwise. But what I can say to camera and PG, for the families yeah, watching yeah. at home, I sure. know there was one scene um, that I did uh, during my Comedy Central days. We kind of worked at Best in the Sky, but what, it was basically, I was in a room, like, there was about 40 people there. But yeah. a scene that happened, which ended up being on TV, is when I fell over in front of the whole crowd with a drink, and I was wearing white. It was red, it was, um, it was Dr. Pepper, I was wearing uh, a white shirt. Tripped over, caught it on camera, splashed all over my shirt. So wait, wait, hold, oh, did you, yeah. did you act, was, this wasn't intentional? This that wasn't intentional. Literally, yeah. it wasn't intentional. I was not even, the thing is, it wasn't even my dialogue, but then it ended up being in the scene, and it ended up being, because it was naturally funny, which was, the scene yeah. was meant to be funny, but it wasn't it. meant to be funny because of that. So that was an embarrassing thing that I could say that I got to fall yeah. over in front of the world and it wasn't part of the plan, but hey, at least I gave the laundry and caution people something to wash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, man. I'm glad that we got that, you know. Mm. And I guess as we're, <laughs> we're drawing to kind of like towards winding down to the walls, the end of this, man, I just want to say... Um, a massive thank you, man, for taking taking your time out to kind of join us and be with us on here because I think I come across a lot of young folk, I come across a lot of people that are still aspiring to kind of enter the media, to become actors, to become actresses, mm. to pursue all aspects of performing arts in the creative mm. field, whether in front or behind the lens. And I get there's a lot of difficulty and challenges there. Um, mm. Speaking as one who, this is where I started, you know, um, when I did my degree i myself was pursuing the whole acting thing and mm -hmm. um documentary and filmmaking and all of that and i feel you know um different time zones different periods we've been affected by different challenges but i think this is definitely a period where people can create their content and the world mm -hmm. can come and check out what you're doing we have a lot of things that are at our disposal now that we could use that can help us kind of move this so some of the barriers that other people may have faced may not necessarily be as strong now. Mm. But there are some pertinent issues like racism, various other issues, stereotyping that exists. I guess as your final comments and thoughts, um, if there's anything that you want to leave as a final thought for someone that's, or anyone that's looking to pursue or follow in your, your kind of steps, what would that be in terms of those? What advice would you give as final thoughts? Uh, study thy craft you know okay study thy craft yeah yeah study thy yeah. craft because we are never gonna know enough i could be nine months old i could be nine years old i could be 99 but the element of always learning has it kind of allowed this concept of normal life to make that learning is cool learning is a beautiful thing yeah um, and i hear you and asking problems. So, now the thing is, one way is doesn't mean it's always the right way. Kind of, I'll answer your question. But like I say, all my questions, all the way I've answered, many individuals may not feel like they've taken anything away from it. But believe me, when it sinks in, mm -hmm. you will. Um, for example, what you say about the racism, how do you overcome that? I'll answer that with leading into the acting thing. Prime example, if you look what the Martin Luther King was all about, peace. They assassinated mm -hmm. him. Marcus Garvey said, we all go back to Africa. They assassinated him. Um, Toussaint, the guy who revolutionized the slave trade and killed off slavery from Haiti, they killed him. Malcolm X would say, well, let's be radical. They killed him. All of these things, kind of like religion. There's an African proverb that says that you can have lakes, you can have rivers, you can have streams, you can have canals, all different. You can, the lake can be Christianity, um, the streams can be uh, Judaism, the canals can be Muslim, but all of them, they all lead to the one God and the one great ocean sea. So what yeah. I'm trying to say with that, when you have just one spectrum, you're not thinking that something else can be beneficial if I contribute with the other. Prime example being, if all these great people that were assassinated, you ask, what is the way then? One way doesn't mean another way. Maybe if we take elements of Dr. King, maybe we sure. take elements of Gandhi, maybe we take elements of Malcolm X, we can all mold together and move forward because we've shown history shown when you're united progress does come so yeah. you need to unite yourself and that leads to another african problem that says we are created with two ears and one mouth 
So we need to listen more and talk more. less. Less, so yeah. when I say craft yourself, you need to listen to what your real aspiration is. Listen to what you want the story to be told. Listen, listen to the heart because the heart speaks beautifully. But we're so subconsciously with technology, um, with the artificial things, with drinking. But if you just clear your mind, you understand your craft. Because I can't say what your advice could be, what my advice could be, because what your intentions may may be completely different. My intentions yeah. are fulfilled. Yeah, maybe so you may totally, want to be in theatre. Yeah. So it's just stuff like that. Yeah. So I can't give opinion. All I'll say is opinion are only facts. So you need to find that fact about yourself because yourself is what really is truly going to define your happiness. No one can give you happiness apart yourself. So really, That's why you need to craft yourself. Hold up that mirror. Introspection. Yeah. Look into mm -hmm. self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Face yourself and what your true intentions are. What you're And only you could really truly answer that for yourself. Yeah, yeah, said, exactly. So I can yeah. give you doses, like I could say, yeah, yeah, no, or whatever. No, but, but I hear you. Like, prime example, I don't want to show. This is a panda moment, bro. This is this is a kung fu panda moment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do if you see a man, he goes the, in pursuit of this big scroll that's going to mm. change and make all this, and the man took it down, and all it was was a reflection of himself. Mm -hmm. When he there took down go. this scroll, it was just him looking at it, and he goes, "I get it." It's about me. Do you understand? So no, no, real talk, man. Respect for that, Frankie. Yes, sir, Mr. Clarence. You know? but look, <laughs> yeah, man, I just want to show you. the people I'm not just a funny man. I, I, I can drop a two, two bars here once in a no, while. No, man, there's two, 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 there's three, four bars there, man. There was five, <laughs> six. That was a mic drop moment, man. There but you I just want to say, Frankie, no, thank you for your time. Respect for that, man. And Look, man, all the best for your journey, what you're doing. I'm expecting big things. I'm expecting to be a part of that journey to see how these things progress. Even Yaz is just saying she just loves this message. So big up, Yaz. Big up to those that were tuning in. Obviously, if you're connecting and watching us now, no doubt you can catch up with Frankie. You're most probably seeing this now anyway. So you should be following him anyway if you already aren't doing so. But um, been really great. And um, yeah, I'm just been grateful for this whole podcast link up conversation because it's important. I feel it'll be good, man. When we move out of this COVID lockdown mm -hmm. thing, I want to kind of see, I think you would be dropping some great pearls of wisdom and, 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 and knowledge to people in the physical meetup sense, if you get yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, more people need to hear this message. Yeah, that's the and, kind of um, thing. So yeah. I'm currently, uh, so I did a video, a few of my videos on uh, Frankie. What, we're going to get cut off, bro. We've got 30 okay, seconds. Okay, no problem. No problem. But, no, I but no, bro, we've got to do a part two. But thank Whenever you for this. Whenever you're ready, man. Lockdown's got of me course, bro. Of course, You've got too much knowledge. That's the problem. <laughs> too much to share. No, thank you. God bless you, bro. And thank May you. May the Lord be with you in your journey, man. Yeah, Peace, love, and Totally. Happiness. Thank you, man. Speak soon, yeah? Peace. Take care, bro.